Okay, let us start out this seminar, and our first speaker is uh, our PhD student, Kirill Nikludov, uh, who will give a talk about uh, our recent research on uh, uh, developing sub-unified framework for uh, general universal <coughs> tra uh, training for, for variational inference based on the uh, optimization of acceptance rate in Metropolis Hastings scheme. Uh, and uh, I may tell my private opinion that I'm very enthusiastic about this line of research, so I think that uh, you'll find it quite fruitful and perspective. Thank you very much for the introduction. And several words about uh, the name of this talk. Um, this talk is about uh, the paper uh, we submitted uh, to ICLE with uh, uh, Pavel Svechkov and uh, Dmitry Petrovich. <laughs> 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 and um, uh, we submitted uh, uh, the paper that uh, um, Metropolis Hastings view on variational inference uh, and adversarial training, but I think that's the, that's the more proper name for for this for this work. And the paper, uh, the name of our paper is more clickbait. And <laughs> Uh, this paper is more proper because all, uh, all we want to make in this work, we want to uh, find uh, some proposal, some, some nice proposal distribution for the metropolis Hastings algorithm. And uh, it happens so that uh, we found some, some interesting connections with variational inference and adversarial training because uh, that, that is in, very interesting because when you are talking about the Chocolate Hastings algorithm, you are not, uh, you don't think about relation influence and adversarial tree. So, this is agenda of my talk. Uh, first, we will talk about goals of this talk. Then we, uh, then I remind you, uh, Metropolis Hastings algorithm. Then I. Uh, show you how, how we can uh, introduce the lower bound on the acceptance rate of the metropolis Hastings algorithm. Then we uh, discuss two problem statements for, for the learning samples. And then we discuss each, each setting in details. So, let's begin with the goal of this talk. And that is disclaimer for the rigorous police of our seminar. That's you can treat this talk as some work in progress. So, uh, the main goal of this talk is to show some interesting view on, on the problem uh, to learn centers. That's not about state-of-the-art uh, performance on, on some SLEP or CIFAR-10 or ImageNet datasets. That's something about um, uh, conceptual view. And um, to, discuss, to discuss this conceptual view, we, we need to recall the metropolis Hastings algorithm. Uh, the metropolis Hastings algorithm, you know, it's uh, pretty easy. We have, uh, we have previous point x, and then we, we, we have proposal distribution q. We sample next point x prime as our proposal, and then we accept uh, the next point X prime if if this inequality holds, and otherwise we, we accept the previous point. We repeat the previous point, and uh, there is a little modification of the metropolis Hastings algorithm. Uh, that <coughs> if, if you just if you don't see that's just proposal without X given. That's called independent metropolis Hastings algorithm. That's Pretty easy, and you can easily prove that tail balance holds for, for such type of formula. And acceptance rate of the Metropolis Hastings algorithm usually defined as follows uh, We have some random variable xi that is defined as this ratio given that, that x, our previous point, already sampled from the target distribution p. And x prime is sampled from the proposal distribution, and this ratio uh, 
uh, using this ratio we can write the acceptance rate. That's just an expectation of the minimum between 1 and Xi. And that's the, I think, conventional, uh, con conventional definition of the acceptance rate. And uh, as you can see, we already can uh, optimize, uh, maximize the acceptance rate with respect to proposal distribution Q. I don't know actually why nobody does it, did it, because that's a pretty simple idea, but very straightforward, and it actually works. It's not clear why should we optimize acceptance rate and maximize it, because usually optimal acceptance rate is not one. Um, if you have, for example, uh, independent metropolis hustings algorithm, one is the optimal acceptance rate. You sure? Uh, optimal yeah. with respect to what? If you have, uh, if you have independent uh, metropolis hustings, you don't have this one, and uh, so acceptance rate equals to one only if Q equals to P. And it's easy to show if we rewrite acceptance rate in the following method. Because here we have uh, O. Yeah, yeah, here we have an expectation with respect to Xi, and uh, this value we can write as the total variation distance between such two distributions. You can think of this distribution as a uh, distribution on the joint vector in joint space x and x prime. And we have two ways to sample uh, this full vector. We can sample the first part of the vector x from true distribution and then we apply our proposal and uh, obtain x prime. Yeah? And also we can sample second part firstly, uh, x prime, and the secondly we, we sample x from our proposal. Could you find uh, what is total relational relation distance? Uh, total variation distance uh, have definition with. Um, it's better to think of it uh, as uh, L one distance in in L one norm, because total variation distance has uh, definition with uh, supremum with respect to all possible outcomes and so on and so on. But it it has pretty simple connection with L1 distance and here you can see that this thing is just L1 distance. I hope that the blackboard... Um, okay. uh, but this thing is very easy to prove. You can just write down on the paper and you'll get it. So then we can uh, use Pinsker's inequality that connects uh, total variation distance and KL divergence. And uh, applying Pinsker's inequality, we can obtain the lower bound on the acceptance rate. So now we have two optimization problems. We can optimize, maximize the acceptance rate with respect to parameters phi of proposal distribution Q, that is equivalent to minimization of this total variation distance. Okay. And also, we can uh, maximize uh, the lower bound on the acceptance rate that is equivalent to minim minimization of, this, of such kind of values. Wait, uh, why are we interested in optimizing these lower bounds when you said that the acceptance rate could be maximized directly? I'll show you that in some cases it's better to optimize uh, KL divergence well, instead of... It's better to optimize uh, the lower bound, because uh, this thing may be hard to optimize. Um, I mean, but uh, in the two slides before, you yeah. had the definition of the acceptance rate, yeah. and you said, and it looked like it is uh, uh, optimizable directly. Yes, so but in <laughs> some cases, it's better to optimize the lower bound because it's it's easier to optimize. Is there in a sense of uh, I'll show you in what sense. Okay. Could you comment on um, 
on, uh, for example, if we take the Hamiltonian Monte Carlo and mm -hmm. the Romanian Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, in both cases, the Hamiltonian is preserved if we solve our dynamics uh, rather good. It means that this total variation is actually zero for both cases. If but we, if one scheme is much could be much more efficient than the other. Yeah. So the acceptance rate is the same, but the schemes are different. Yeah. Because the acceptance rate is one of the metrics which define the performance of the MCMC methods. Uh, the, the second one is the mixing rate. How do you define a mixing rate? Mixing rate, you can, you can think of the rate as the number of steps uh, that, that you need uh, your Markov chain converge to the stationary distribution. But do you consider, in some sense, this in, in, in this? In some sense, we consider, sense. but uh, we show that uh, we can just we can just use some engineering tricks to to make our mixing rate be better. So we'll discuss it in 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 in. in special settings, in, in both settings. But we, not, do, we do not maximize the accept, uh, mixing rate directly. You said that nobody done this before. This is because this is just strange. That, that's why we are asking. Okay. <laughs> um, Sorry, why do you think so? Why do you think that this is strange? I didn't get it. Because uh, because we have two because because we have two measure of performance of MCMC methods that's oh. acceptance rate and also mixing rate and we can obtain okay uh, acceptance rate is not good if mix is, is poor that was the main motivation yeah yeah I would say I'll show you in, in that several that slides important. that in some cases you can obtain uh, you can obtain perfect uh, acceptance rate but uh, zero mixing rate. By the way, total variation is symmetric, right? But KL divergence is not. Mm -hmm. So does that inequality hold or both KL divergence from yeah, one sure. distribution to another and yeah. something like that? Okay. <coughs> another question. Do you somehow deal with the correlation between samples, like after the chain is mixed? So is it like another metric, like uh, another dimension? Uh, did we, did we check the correlation? Like, no, did you do anything about that? Because it looks like that that's a third dimension, like the third property of MCMC. Yeah, 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 I get it. Yes. <coughs> yes, in experiments we, we, we looked uh, on the correlation and you will see it. So, in terms of expectation, we can write it like this. And uh, here, in both, in both problems, we can uh, we need to, to estimate this loss function, yeah? We need to estimate density ratio and we need to somehow sample from this distribution to, to estimate the loss. And um, now we move to the problem statement for two settings and two settings are the following. Uh, in density based we assume that target distribution is given up to is given by the density, uh, unnormalized density. So density uh, up to normalization constant is known. And in sample-based setting, we assume target distribution is given as a set of samples from, from target distribution. And you can also call it, in, in other papers, they call it uh, analytical target distribution and empirical target distribution. And we proposed to use explicit models uh, for the density-based settings because we can uh, estimate, we can evaluate density ratio explicitly, yeah, or estimate it. Uh, and we propose to use implicit models because in, in, in case of um, empirical distribution we we will learn a discriminator to estimate the density ratio. 
So let's move on to the density based setting. And uh, here we have some problem, as we already discussed a little bit. If we have a symmetric kernel, for example, just normal distribution with the uh, with the mean in in the uh, x, okay. Then uh, when uh, our objective can be rewritten as follows, and here we can learn just uh, we can um, set our loss arbitrarily close to zero, taking uh, taking the next sample x prime close enough to x. Okay. So if our proposal is a delta function, we will just obtain a perfect acceptance rate. But we have troubles with mixing rate. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't happen if we if we consider independent proposal. That's a little bit weird, but in some in, in some works people try to optimize acceptance rate. Uh, uh, explicitly for the independent uh, metropolis casting subgrid because in such case it you can show that you just you, you, you don't collapse to the delta function okay I'll I hope that the blackboard is here and I'll show the intuition but it's not so I think um, and now, for in, in the independent case, we have independent proposal for both uh, for both objectives, and we can write optimization of acceptance rate as follows, and or, of the lower bound as follows. And uh, what we what we need to do in both settings, we uh, or in in density based setting, we need to evaluate this density ratio. And we can do it explicitly, but we need how, somehow to sample from p of x. We can sample from q, but we don't know how to sample from p. And uh, we suppose that we can use independent mh with current proposal, currently beyond proposal q. Uh, to sample to obtain some some set of samples from target distribution and then estimate our loss and then perform the gradient descent step and that's just straightforward solution of all the optimization of this problem of all the optimization of this objective and the same of course the same holds for the lower bound we can write it just like logarithm and some Weighted sum of logarithm, um, but uh, the interesting things happen if we consider Bayesian inference. Uh, in Bayesian inference, uh, we have some data set, we have likelihood, as you already know, we have prior, and we want, uh, for, for, for some reason, we, we, we can have other reasons, but that's... <laughs> We want to obtain a predictive distribution, and we want to obtain samples from our posterior distribution to estimate this expectation. Okay, so we we now we can now see it as uh, the problem of sampling, sampling from the posterior distribution, because now we need samples to estimate the posterior or predictive distribution. And uh, if we take a look at um, our lower bound, uh, we see that uh, our loss is now KL divergence between these two uh, distributions and it splits up on the two KL divergences and in the first KL divergence you can see just the KL, KL divergence for a variational lower bound. That's the KL divergence that we minimize while doing a variational inference. And the second KL divergence is just uh, forward KL divergence. Uh, we can rewrite this thing as minus alpha and this thing uh, we have here we have only one sum that depends on phi. So we need somehow, somehow to sample theta and estimate this thing 
<laughs> and here we we just obtained um, we just obtained um, mini batching property. So if if you want to optimize uh, ac the acceptance rate directly, you need to. So here you need to estimate, uh, evaluate uh, density of our posterior using all the data, data sets. And you can just move the product of a data set, yes, from, from the model. And here we can move because we have more of And it's easier to optimize because now we can use only mean batches of data uh, while estimating this part. And also there is some works that that show that we can sample from the, from the target distribution via metropolis Hastings algorithm using also only mini batches of data. So here, to estimate this, we can also use only mini batches of data. And now our full objective can be estimated using only mini batches of data. And that is what, what the sense why the, why the optimization uh, of the lower bound can be easier than optimization of the acceptance rate. So in some sense, this makes the scheme scalable. Yeah. And applicable to uh, large data sets. Okay, let's compare this thing to the variational inference, because here we have here we have the very similar objective to the variational inference. And we want to we want to see if can we just can we uh, estimate this term, or we just obtain some random random walk in this space and nothing happens. And on Linet five architecture on NIST, it reduced Linet five, but it's still we we need to sample in the. Uh, 9,000 per meter space. And what we do here, we perform variational inference and perform, um, perform the optimization of the lower bound. And then we... You mean of our lower bound on acceptance rate? Yes. Uh, the lower bound on the acceptance rate. And then at each epoch, we, we just uh, sample uh, Sample from the posterior distribution using independent metropolis Hastings algorithm. But here we use our variational approximation as the proposal distribution. And here we use uh, our learned proposal distribution. And uh, which family for Q? You ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Q is uh, fully factorized Gaussian, uh, standard normal prior, and that's it. And um, also, we wonder if we uh, if we can obtain some uh, some performance boost just using uh, proposal uh, just using uh, variational approximation at the proposal distribution. And in case of variational inference, yes, we can we can obtain for little samples we, we can obtain boost in performance. Uh, Using, using filtered samples with the metropolis Hastings correction. And here we have the same performance, approximately the same performance, at least for, for the small number of samples. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, do I just understand correctly that we can view variational inference as optimization of a less charged lower bound from the acceptance stage? Yeah, uh, no, no, no. Because, because in the slide, you have uh, these two parallel divisions. No, no, no. <laughs> no, just the previous before the. Okay. Well, there was a summation of the yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, sum of uh, two parallel divisions. If you minimize the sum of two of them, you optimize the lower bound on the acceptance rate. Yeah. And if you minimize just one of them, you optimize. You optimize something. Oh, oh, some oh, some oh, okay, okay, So yeah. you doesn't. Can you imagine the acceptance rate and effective sample size here. Yeah, it's, it's hard to measure in, in the acceptance rate in the 9,000 dimensional space because it's, it has very big variance.
sorry, if you have Q and you have P, you can just measure the, yeah, the ratio. But uh, the question is how much samples uh, do you need to take to measure the acceptance rate? Have you tried? Yes. And it is like, like if you sample 10,000 times. Uh, I, I think that um, so it depends on the it depends on on the you can you can measure the acceptance rate in two ways you can just uh, measure the probability of acceptance just take the number of accepted divided by number of metropolis castings tests and it will have large variance and also you can measure um, but it's you like you're doing this during running the chain or you pause the chain at some moment and then sample many times like measuring accepting trades at that particular moment but that doesn't work because uh, but like acceptance rate changes during the, the chain during you're changing your parameters yeah. and then acceptance rate changes yeah yeah so like to, to you can measure it when with parameters fixed at some like fixed point. Yeah. So it means that you should run. You're running your MCA chain. Then you at some point pause, and then you sample many times and try to measure acceptance rate at that particular point. And you can do that, or not really. That's not the correct way to to measure the acceptance rate. I think. But like uh, acceptance rate changes during running the chain. You know. So it's like it's like a function no, of how many steps you've that's done. The, the, the acceptance rate that's some um, some property of the chain at all because it, it doesn't changes. But it changes if you change the if, if you if you if you start to sample from the target distribution, if you converge your mark of chain, then acceptance rate, the probability of and I didn't understand like your your could you show the definition of the acceptance rate? <coughs> so it, it depends, there is no chain here, so there is distribution P and distribution Q, so there is no yes, chain, because there is no unrolling yes. of the things. So if you can compute, so let's, you have an integral, so let, let's say you have a, basically you can estimate this integral with MC, with Monte Carlo, just like you have everything fixed, you have your P fixed, you have your Q fixed, Yeah. like, a, like one particular step, mm -hmm. and then you can estimate acceptance rate, you can just do many samples many times and like estimate this integral. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this will be an estimate of acceptance. Rate. Yes. 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 <laughs> and this is related to one particular point of chain, not running the no, whole chain. No, that's is related. You are you are talking about different ch chains. This is means that uh, parameters phi are fixed. Yes. Right. Yes. And then you can the fixed. Well, with, with fixed proposal, you can obtain the acceptance rate, but in in high dimensions, it's hard to estimate because it, it has large variance. So it takes a lot of samples to estimate. But, so the, but the, the thing is, that you need to estimate a one-dimensional characteristic. So usually, like estimating one-dimensional characteristic is much easier than than say estimating the gradient of acceptance rate. That's much much harder because the gradient is high dimensional. Yes, but we're estimating stochastic gradient. Well, for, for estimating acceptance rates, you, you, you need uh, probably the, the, the estimate with a um, small variance, not with a large one. And what Kirill was talking about is that uh, this integral is, is in huge dimension space, so you need a uh, lot of samples in order to, to obtain acceptance rate estimate with a small variance. So you need to sample much more than the number of dimensions in general case. This is why it's hard to estimate the acceptance rate. But this, this is testable, so this is, this is possible to test. Like how, how much do you, how many samples do you actually need? Because it's like uh, there are some functions, it's easy to build an example of a function in high dimensions that's easy to estimate with like very few samples. Yes. So anyway, but this is not it, our case. But you know, have you tried? <laughs> oh, no. Because you, you can just do like, uh, you can take two sets of samples and measure like how close those are. If the estimates are close, it means that variance is not that big. Uh, variance of of these samples or yeah, like variance of your estimators. Yeah. Like each estimator is an average over like a thousand samples. Yeah. You can measure the variance of those. 
of estimator. Yes. And those would be the higher or the small? Yes, <laughs> and it's high. So you did try it? You yeah, yeah. Okay. That, because you said no. <laughs> uh, are there any guarantees on the converge, convergence of your algorithm? Rigor police is calling. Mm. <laughs> I think it's the same as the for, for variational inference. So it's just function. It has local minimums and so on. We we have no minimax game here. So it's really just, just a just the optimization of the function. Of course, <coughs> it has some local minimums, and then we can watch them. Anyway, do you have some well more direct uh, measurements on acceptance rate or effective sample size that somehow support your theory on maximization of acceptance rate? Because this is accuracy is is very indirect measure. Yeah, yeah. Do you have some experience yeah. even for for very two example? For very two example, I have uh, I have. Um, I have two pictures with landscapes, I can show you it on the last slides. Well, not on the last slide, it, it, not on the last slides, but uh, at the end of presentation I can show you the pictures for this toy uh, problem, where we have two Gaussians and we, our proposal is one Gaussian, and then we can see that optimization of acceptance rate is, is closely related with the optimization of the whole bound. At least for for such to approve. Okay, let's move on to the sample base setting. Um, we also have two objectives, but now it's easy to sample because we have samples from P of X. We have large set of samples. And but it's hard to estimate the ratios, and to estimate the ratios, we usually do density ratio estimation via adversarial training, and we propose to learn such discriminator that tries to distinguish these following these two distributions, where we have x, yeah, yeah, and vice versa. Yeah. No, no, but because, because we uh, I changed it. Yeah. The order of this. <coughs> so the discriminator tries to. Uh, it's, it's better in, in the other notation, sorry, but the discriminator uh, tries to distinguish between two distributions. When, when the first argument is sampled from P of X and the second argument uh, was sampled from Q from our proposal, yeah, using x, and vice versa. Here, the second argument is sampled from p of x, and the first argument is sampled using proposal distribution. And now we think uh, about proposal distribution as, uh, as about some, some neural network that takes x as its input, and x prime, uh, and outputs x, x prime, and uh, we just can exclude the delta function from the space of, uh, of the neural networks, introducing bottleneck and some noise in the architecture. And this discriminator uh, estimates this ratio, and there is some ambiguity in this ratio because um, we see that d of x and x prime equals to 1 minus d with the swapped arguments. And now we have four ways to estimate the density ratio. We can use these values with these values or both of them. And we don't know how to estimate the density ratio. Mm, so that's why to, to exclude this ambiguity we, we just introduce the discriminator of special structure. We take D wave 
of two arguments as such function. That's a convolutional neural network. That uh, and we uh, take as input x x prime uh, and obtain d wave of x x prime. And here we take x prime x and obtain the other uh, output. And we take softmax of it. <coughs> so now we have no ambiguity and the algorithm is following. We just need to sample uh, from our set. We need to sample from our proposal. Uh, then we... I think I forgot uh, discriminator. Ah, train discriminator. Um, 13 is the number of equation. Um, and then we estimate uh, our loss using this discriminator and perform gradient descent step. And also we can do it for, uh, for the lower bound. And if we compare the gradients of the acceptance rate and the uh, lower bound on the acceptance rate, we can see that um, we, we can rewrite uh, our discriminator as follows. And we can um, denote uh, d small as some difference between, between two classes. And if we're optimizing the acceptance rate, we're taking gradients with respect to x prime, because x prime was sampled from, from our proposal, and we, can, we need to take gradients with, of our, with respect to parameters of our proposal. And uh, here we have. Uh, uh, exponent of minus d x x prime, and here we have just a gradient of d with respect to x prime. And uh, if our discriminator will be very confident, if our discriminator is easy to distinguish between a true class and the false class, then we have saturating gradients. So we have vanishing gradients here. So, in some sense, it's easier to optimize the lower bound because here you can meet such problem. And the pictures for the independent proposal, uh, that's the pictures. So, at the evaluation step, we can do two things. We can just take proposal, uh, take independent proposal and sample from it, yes? And also we can use discriminator to estimate the density ratio. We, 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 are, we, we have no any guarantees how, how, uh, how the density ratio is, is estimated, but we can do it. We can estimate the density ratio using discriminator and when we can perform metropolis castings. And here we have uh, samples with metropolis casting correction and here uh, samples without. So here we're assembling uh, the objects or using this data as a, as a set of objects from the target distribution, right? Yeah. So this is not Bayesian neural network, this is another setting. And for Markov chain proposal, we have uh, two settings where, where we optimize the acceptance rate and the lower bound on the acceptance rate. And if you optimize the acceptance rate, you can see that uh, you have high correlation between samples. Uh, Are those sequential samples? Yeah, yeah. One by one from left to right, from top to bottom. So it's samples from, from the desired distribution, but samples have some high correlation and we have no any, uh, anything in loss function that um, that say that we need to uncorrelate these samples. And uh, we're wondering, does we actually uh, learn uh, the Markov sampler here? Because here we can just, for example, that, that could be samples from, from the independent proposal, yeah? And to, to check it, we just check uh, the distributions from, from the uh, two data set points. Uh, here, all the images are sampled from the image in, in the red box. So, this uh, proposal takes uh, this image in the red box as input 
and I'll put something, and that something is, is here. And uh, for, for zero, you can see that it's, uh, we have a lot of zeros and some other, uh, some numbers, and for one, you, you, we can see that we have uh, a lot of ones and some other numbers. This is for proposal distribution optimized with respect to lower bound or with respect yes. to accepted state? Lower bound. And that's it. I would say that should be this start, not the end. <laughs> <laughs> this is working in progress. So, any questions? Did you try using the technique from the paper NISMC to maximize the mixing rate? What I did is um, I started from a data set point and then ran a chain for a few iterations and then measured how well, uh, how fast the chain converges. So, I guess if you how mix those two that's techniques. Mixing rate, yeah. Yeah, so if you mix those two techniques, you will get a bolt and high acceptance rate and a good mix. In nice MC, they, they use adversarial training. Yes. So they sample the points from, from the target distribution using uh, in density based setting. They use HMC to sample from the target distribution and then learn discriminator. So they, they just um, try to yeah, try to make sample based setting from the density base. Yeah, but, but the trick they used is they, they used only a few iterations <coughs> of the Markov chain. And if they, the discriminator works well, after just a few samples, mm -hmm. then the uh, mixing rate is high. Yeah, so the chain converges quite fast. I think that's not about... Uh, uh, they, they, they just... Uh, yes, because they just did it in, in the loss functions. Because they discriminated, distinguished between, between samples from 10 iterations and, and yeah. some other. But th that's not the optimization of the mixing rate. They, I well, think not, not directly. Yeah. I see it <coughs> makes the chain converge faster. I mean, if you, if you combine this with your technique, maybe you'll get both the high mixing rate and high acceptance rate. Mm. They do it... Okay, let's discuss that. Okay. Um, that is pictures for, for the acceptance rate and for the lower bound of acceptance rate. Uh, stochastic gradient descent from several points uh, and it has approximately the same uh, local means. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what I like in this research is that uh, it provides us new mathematical should you take the speaker with you? We'll take the speaker, of course. And I just would like to, to make some conclusion remarks. We don't mind. Uh, so what I like on this research is that uh, it provides us with the new mathematical tools of uh, uh, training proposal distributions as implicit uh, probabilistic models. So we can use a neural network, uh, which takes some well, standard noise and, as the input and the previous sample. Uh, Markov chain as an input and provides us or uh, generates new sample. Uh, and that's, I think, quite good because uh, up to now most of our uh, community generally used some very simple proposal distributions, which are, of course, completely ineffective uh, for the case of uh, huge dimensional uh, spaces where we need to sample from huge dimensional distribution. Uh, so, this is one of the first attempts of uh, adopting deep learning framework for uh, learning proposal distributions. Because uh, when we have a huge dimensional distribution, it's uh, extremely difficult to find a good proposal distribution uh, to develop some efficient sampling techniques. And this, is, uh, this was probably the main drawback which limited the, the spread of uh, MCMC techniques for uh, high dimensional spaces. And so this is one of the first attempts of uh, uh, making the, the MCMC techniques scalable for the cases of large data sets and for the cases of uh, huge dimensions. So let us now thank the speaker.